get out your gardening tools. Greenhouses and nurseries are open for business. This order allows landscapers and lawn service companies and nurseries to return to work, subject to strict social distancing. Will President Trump's immigration ban impact Michigan agriculture? And Michigan Ag Commodities' Chris Betts has your market update. I'm Janelle Bros, and this is Farm News 5. Farm News 5 is brought to you by Ford. In welcome news for the state's green industry, nurseries, greenhouses, and landscapers are able to open for business immediately. Governor Gretchen Whitmer made the announcement alongside an extension of her Stay Home, Stay Safe executive order through May 15th. Businesses that are allowed to reopen have to follow social distancing guidelines and supply employees with cotton masks. Uh, so they've already adjusted their, um, their checkout lanes uh, so that they can, uh, they can be six feet, you know, with the social distancing. Um, one of our, our centers uh, is handing out uh, masks that can be worn by all customers as they walk in the front door. Uh, so they're making sure that they are all uh, using the, the PPE, the appropriate PPE. Uh, and, and those that aren't able to adjust their stores uh, are looking at uh, telephone and online ordering uh, for curbside pickup and delivery. But I think the way that we're laid out, uh, it's, it's, we're going to be able to accomplish this uh, and keep everyone safe. Our long care folks, uh, they are uh, one person per truck, uh, one person on a piece of machinery. Uh, they've invested in uh, cleaning uh, material as, as put forward uh, from EPA. So every night there will be cleaning of all the machinery, all the equipment uh, that they use during the day, uh, including the trucks. Uh, they are uh, taking care, as people come into work, um, they're, they're coming in uh, having them do staggered shifts. Uh, and then, of course, checking temperatures as soon as they get there um, uh, and encouraging all employees, if they're not feeling well, that they should stay home. Uh, same is happening with our land landscapers as well. What does it mean to our industry? Uh, we are so thankful and so relieved that uh, we, we may have a season. If you want a car from a company that's been building them for 115 years, get a Ford. If you want a car with driver assist technology, Get a Ford. You're going to want a Ford. Agriculture producers in Michigan and across the country are breathing a sigh of relief after President Trump clarified his plans to suspend immigration into the United States. Migrant laborers who have H-2A and H-2B visas will still be allowed to enter the country, leaving the state's ag workforce intact. This order will only apply to individuals seeking a permanent residency and other words, those receiving green cards, big factor, will not apply to those entering on a temporary basis. As we move forward, we'll examine what additional immigration-related measures should be put in place. H-2A is a non-immigrant visa program. So the folks that are under H-2A are coming here, doing a job for a season, and then returning to their homes. They're not looking for citizenship or long-term residency. So. The EO had no effect on the H-2A or, in fact, the H-2B. Other than under H-2B, there's a cap under that program of 66,000, roughly. And there was some talk of increasing that by another 35,000. However, this EO, as we understand, has taken away that opportunity right now. So we are still operating under the cap of 66,000 for H-2B. But H-2A is still open and rolling. And that's what we assume because um, the administration's been doing some things to help streamline the process. While COVID-19 has led to some logistical and transportation challenges, BAME says the virus has not deterred temporary workers from returning to Michigan for the 2020 growing season. Great Lakes Ag Labor Services is communicating with both employers and H-2A workers about creating safe work environments. Alihio on our staff uh, developed some videos uh, talking about the executive orders here, what's going on here in Michigan. Uh, how to protect themselves, and we've uh, distributed that on the buses as they come up here, and then we obviously provide a lot of information once they get here. So far, uh, they seem to be comfortable uh, continuing to come. Uh, all of our clients and all of our farmers here are trying to do everything they can to uh, follow uh, uh, the guidelines, the advisories for a safe workplace. We are a little concerned with the ability to meet the social distancing guidelines that the CDC recommends. 
Uh, we're trying to do some things in within the existing housing to try to move beds around, try to have, you know, toe to head uh, spacing of workers, do everything we can within the confines of the limited housing we do have. And then also trying to make arrangements should someone exhibit symptoms or be diagnosed with COVID to be able to have uh, some quarantine areas either on site uh, or we've been talking to Michigan Department of Ag and Rural Development about possibility of maybe perhaps FEMA housing or trailers that might be available. We've also talked about uh, some of the hotels, motels that are not being utilized right now. Um, so there's a variety of things that are being looked at to try to make sure we can provide that isolation when needed. BAME recommends growers visit the COVID-19 resource page on Michigan Farm Bureau's website to learn more about how to best keep their families and employees safe. Control the future of your farm. Foster Swift's experienced attorneys can craft a custom succession plan for your business. Learn more at fosterswift.com. The United States Department of Agriculture announced a new aid package earlier this week to assist both farmers and consumers. The program is really divided into two parts. One is a uh, direct payment, $16 billion in direct payments to farmers, ranchers, and producers who've experienced unprecedented losses during this pandemic. Since we wanted to get the payments out to producers as quickly as possible, we decided to use the funds in the CCC, the current funds of $6.5 million, billion, combined with the 19.5 of COVID money, rather than wait for the replenishment of the CCC funds in July. Based on industry estimates of damage, Mr. President, it is becoming apparent that we'll need the additional CCC funds as we continue to track the economic losses. Secondly, and this is really important as well, the USDA will be purchasing $3 billion in fresh produce, dairy, and meat products to be distributed to Americans in need through our food bank networks, as well as other community and faith-based organizations. Well, it's going to be by commodity. So if a commodity can prove that they, they have suffered damage based on COVID-19, um, they will receive a payment. Uh, farmers would receive a payment for that commodity they produce. It will be divided into two, two payments. The first would be from losses from January 1 through April 15th, and it would be based on 85% of production. And the second payment would be from April 15th through the next two quarters of the year, based on 30% of production. And these percentages would be also... Um, derived from formulas that USDA develops based on overall loss. So USDA is using numbers that they have currently available to them, and so for the major commodities, they've got readily access. Ready, they have access to really good information. But if for for minor commodities, some of our specialty crops, they are recommending that those industries reach out directly um, with numbers specifically to help USDA um, build that program. The Department of Agriculture has not confirmed the distribution of payments, but American Farm Bureau Federation Chief Economist Dr. John Newton says rumblings are that close to $10 billion will be directed to cattle, hog, and dairy producers, while the remaining funds will be split between specialty crop and row crop producers. Payments are expected to be released in late May. The ethanol industry and poultry, sheep, and lamb producers were left out of what is believed to be the initial COVID-19-related aid package. And now, from Michigan Ag Commodities, with our weekly market report, here's Chris Betts. Thanks, Janelle. Worldwide quarantines continue to weigh on commodities. Trade had to contend with spot oil futures trading to a negative value for the first time earlier this week. Commodities felt some recovery the second half of the week, with oil firmer as the May contract expired. Pressure on corn and beans is also coming from threatened meat demand, as U.S. processing plants are being forced to shut down or reduce capacity as more and more workers test positive for COVID-19. Wheat has resiliently been able to stay propped up. Support has come from expectations for Russian export limits to be put in place as early as mid-May. For more market information, go to michigan.com. With Michigan Agricultural Commodities, I'm Chris Betts. For additional news and resources related to coronavirus, visit michfb.com or michiganfarmnews.com. With Farm News 5, I'm Janelle Gross. Have a great week of farming. <laughs>